So in our Matty Cube X, we have some eggs that the lady that gave us our white Moran rooster gave us eggs from her blue black splash blue copper black copper um, Moran breeding program and she gave us 16 of those eggs and um, one from her olive egg or pen so we actually set these and we have 13 days left um, so I'm gonna go ahead so that's basically we almost we have eight days left so I'm gonna go ahead and candle these and see what we can see inside the shell so this is egg number one and it has got something in it but it looks real iffy to be at this point so I don't see anything live in there I don't see any movement so we will just mark that as such and keep moving on this one looks a little better this one has more dark area to it so definitely not clear still developing so this egg looks like it's got a yolk in it I can see an embryo moving around in here if you can see it moving right there so it seems like it's real far behind but there's definitely um, as far as the other ones it's far behind but there's definitely something live and moving inside of there you can see it on camera that little black dot right here there's actually two parts of it that keeps moving. So we're going to mark this one as live. I'm going to turn my light back on. So this is egg number four. Well, and this looks like this is, yep, sure enough. This one's cracked. Can't tell. As dark as these eggs are, you can tell that it was cracked. But it definitely is. So we'll be getting rid of egg number four. Okay, here is one of our quail eggs. And he's definitely fertile. And he is developing and he I can see some blood vessels in there okay Moran egg number five this one has uh, something going on on this side and developing I want to see if we can see any kind of movement this is a darker egg and it's definitely a pointier egg so it's hard to tell which end is the air sac definitely seems like it was the other end but they say that pointy eggs are roosters so we're going to say this guy is developing don't see any real movement in there The eggs are really dark, so it's hard to see as much as a lighter egg. So we got egg number six right here, and you can see right there how he's moving. See him moving around in there? So this guy is definitely alive and developing. So this is egg number seven. It's a really dark egg. 
It is definitely filled up mass and grown inside, so it's not definitely not a clear egg. Um, it's a little bit more um, developed than some of the other ones, and what I think is that some parts of the incubator get warmer than others, so when I get done cattling them, I'm going to swap all the eggs around so that the ones that are one end end up on the other end for the last eight days so that maybe they can catch up. So here's another quail egg that I put in here and you can actually see the quail moving around inside there. So he's on his way. So this is egg number eight, and these eggs are really dark, so they're not the ideal ones to candle, but if we look really hard, I think I just saw some movement in the top left corner. See a little dot right there that keeps moving around. So. You can definitely see where he's developing the egg sac and then those blotches are just different levels of darkness in the color of the shell. So I think this guy is definitely live. I'm seeing movement in there. So that one is looking good. So egg number nine is the olive egg or egg that she gave me. And what we can see in this one more because it's not as dark. There's definitely an air sac. There's definitely a mass right here. Let's just see. You can see see some veining I haven't really seen any movement but I'd say there's some development this quail egg is completely clear so we are going to toss it Look at the next one. Okay, so this guy, he's got some, some movement in there. You can see him moving and you can see some of his veins right here. So this guy is alive. See what this guy looks like. Okay, so there is a air sac and some development in there. You can see a little bit of the veining. So I'm gonna say this guy deserves some more time because he seems like he's developing in there. All right, let's see what this one, this one looks a little bit, it's a lighter one. We can see more of what's going on. And I see some veining. And I see some more veining right there. So I'm going to say this guy's going to get some more time to see how he develops. So this is egg number 13. And it's more of a solid color egg. So you can see this embryo moving around in here. See that dark spot there? That's the chick. That's him moving around.
It was egg number 14 and he is definitely developing. He's moving around. You can see him moving in the shell right there. He's moving a lot. Turn back on the light. There he goes. So he is moving a lot in there. Egg number 14 is definitely good. All right, so that concludes the eggs out of the 17 eggs. One of them was cracked and one of the quail eggs were not good. But we have this tray of quail eggs and then there's a couple more back there. That, so we may end up with, um, you know, a dozen quail eggs out of this hatch as well. So we'll keep you posted on the chicks that hatch. There was a couple that looked iffy and a few that I couldn't tell and four or five that we saw that were definitely, well, probably about five or six. We could definitely tell that we're alive at this point. So interested um, to see how this turns out because these eggs are so dark. It's so hard to really see what's going on in there um, with these Moran eggs. So it'll be definitely a surprise to see how many that we hatch out. Okay, it's day 17. We're at 100.5 degrees. It says we've got four days until day 21. And we got baby quails in here. And we have one, two, three, four, five. And there is 11 total eggs, quail eggs in here. Um, so we have two that are pipped so that makes seven so that's four more that we're waiting to be pipped and then we have our 16 chicken eggs in here that will be in lockdown tomorrow so we hadn't um took the turner out yet we were keeping an eye on to see if we saw any pips and then we went out to dinner and came back and just all of a sudden there were five baby quail in here and they are ready to go in the brooder. We got our brooder set up, we got all the uh, turners taken out and got the humidity up. So we're about to put these guys in the brooder and then wait for the rest to hatch probably by in the morning. And then we'll be waiting on our Moran eggs to hatch. So 11 eggs, five of hatch, two are pipped on day 17 of this batch of quail, contornix quail and Moran eggs. These are the copper, blue copper, black copper, and splash Moran. Okay, so these five are in the brooder, learning how to eat and drink. We just have them in a tub with a light on. And my daughter is out here. We just moved the, the geese out to the side yard so they can graze this afternoon. And I'll show you some footage of that. And here is our geese update. So our middle geese, we have three that we got from the auction as week old babies. And the one in the front right here is the what was the middle size geese. And she apparently has some Sabatol geese in her because her feathers are starting to fluff. And then this one right here is the smallest goose, and we think she has some Chinese goose in her. So here is our babies that we were hatching, the Moran eggs that we got from the lady that we got our new rooster from. These are the French Morans with the feathers on their feet. And so we had 16 good eggs. One of them was an olive egger. And we had 13 of them hatch and let's see one two three four five six ten, yeah 13 of them hatch and the olive egger is blue so we got a really weird is that the olive egger is a, is a blue these are supposed to be splash blue copper and black copper morans and then we got the striped one back here which is a mystery and then we got a bunch of black ones and a bunch of blue ones and a bunch of dark blue ones and then we have this splash one right here can't see from the light but he's actually like that gray lavender splash color and they're just different shades of gray and then our olive egger that we have is a little gray one 
with a beard. And then we hatched out five of those quail eggs. So I'm gonna be cleaning out the incubator and hatching some more quails. Seeing how that goes. But yeah, 13 out of 16 eggs for our Matty Coop X. This go around for our chickens. And these were uh, local eggs, so we didn't have to ship them. So I still think that was pretty good. I don't know the ratios or anything of the lady that gave us the eggs, the breeder, but obviously uh, most of them, almost all of them actually were fertile and then three of them just stopped developing. So it happens. I'm very happy with 13 out of 16. It's a really good hatch rate. So that's our Morans and that's going to be the last chickens that we're hatching this year until at least fall. And then if you look down here. I haven't fed these little baby kittens this morning. We had a, we had three little kittens that, there was actually four of them to begin with and um, the mama left them in my chicken pen and I haven't seen her since. She was coming in my screen room eating my dog food and the last day that I saw her is the day that I found the kittens and the kittens come up closer to the, um, moved themselves closer to the my screen room and so I've been feeding them. And one of them took off and they're all black and one of them is black and white and one of the uh, the fourth one was a black and white one and he took off and I haven't seen him since but three of them have been staying right here and we've been feeding them till they're old enough to get neutered <clears throat> and find new homes so I'm about to feed those little kittens and I'll talk to you guys in a little bit so these are the seeds that I've planted in the last couple days, I planted a bunch of cilantro out, planted all these dahlia seeds, some of these uh, bright lights mixed cosmos, some oriental uh, poppy, the 40 inch tall ones, um, emptied out this Eskimo marigold. Um, I got this a couple years ago and none of them ever came up when I was starting seeds, so I just dumped them everywhere to see if any of the seeds would be viable and come up. Um, I planted this dwarf fairy tale mix of the candy tuft, some of the so easy chrysanthemums. Um, I planted both of these bags of wildflower blends. And we did the white Dixie butter peas, the top pick pink eyes, the Texas cream 40s, and we also planted the big boy um, the big boy purple hole cow peas. And then I have these six or seven Christmas llamas that I saved seeds for that I wanted to poke in, but I thought I would be planting those where my um, where my spaghetti squash were coming out, but now my spaghetti squash are coming back on again, so I may just tuck those in somewhere. I'm not sure yet where. And then in here, I've drug out I planted a bunch of these, almost all of these I think I've spread around the Super Cactus Senia Redman. Um, I haven't planted some more of these yet, but the, I've got some growing throughout my garden and my flower planters. These are the tomatillas that I'm growing in the front of the garden that are the yellow ones that are start putting on. And then I wanted to start some more green ones. Some more summer savory and some more dill and fennel. So that's what I'm working on starting is some more of these. And then I just started also some daddle peppers from seeds I had in my freezer. And I still need to, to start my summer roselle that I got from Hoss Tools. So that's that.